let me just say a little bit more about what's really going on in this process of strand exchange. The RAD51 or RecA protein uh, forms a filament on single-stranded DNA, and when it does so, uh, each monomer of RecA can bind uh, three nucleotides of the single-stranded DNA, and it will bind and form this, uh, uh, this filament, and the filament, as it binds, stretches the single-stranded DNA to about one and a half times the normal length. This, it also stretches double-stranded DNA, so you probably remember uh, that uh, DNA, uh, B form DNA has 10.4 base pairs per helical turn. When double stranded DNA is bound inside the Rec A filament, it has been ex underwound and extended so that there are now 18.6 base pairs per turn. So there's almost a 50% increase in, in the uh, length of the molecule. And this unwinding. Um, exposes the DNA bases in a way which makes it easier for this strand exchange process that I uh, have mentioned uh, to take place. Now what's going on at every point in that strand exchange is pretty simple. Um, here's double-stranded DNA which is held inside the RecA or RAD51 protein, and here's the single strand of DNA which is in the same protein, and all that's happening basically is that we're forming an AT base pair um, between one of the two strands of the double-stranded DNA and, and the original single-stranded DNA, and one releases um, the, the other strand of DNA. And this is going to happen, of course, at every base pair along this whole region, as long as all the bases are, are essentially uh, homologous. The way in which this strand exchange happens biochemically can be illustrated uh, here. This is a pretty standard assay for the way people know that the Rec A or Rad51 filament can carry out these strand exchange reactions. Here, uh, the, the Rec A protein is bound to a single-stranded circular uh, piece of DNA and then confronted with a linear double-stranded molecule. And since the Rec A will now search for the homologous sequences in the double-stranded DNA, it begins to cause the exchange of base pairs that I illustrated before. There's some intermediate point where part of this exchange has taken place, where, where one of the two strands has been base paired and the other uh, strand, is, as illustrated here, is being uh, kicked out. Um, and this process will continue all the way around until the circle is complete. Um, and one ends up with a nicked circle, which is illustrated NC, and with a displaced single-strand piece of DNA. And those things can be seen here on a, on a, uh, a, 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 on a agarose gel, which is probed uh, for the presence of these uh, particular molecules. So here we start out with single-stranded DNA at the bottom. Um, there's the double-stranded DNA. And then um, you can see the appearance of this Nick circle, which is the product of this reaction. And above it, uh, kind of smeared out, are these uh, joint molecules, or these intermediates of this strand exchange. Probably an easier way to sort of see um, this is, is by, uh, by using a different approach, which is to use radioactive phosphate to label the ends of the linear uh, double-stranded DNA molecule. Here again, uh, there's a circle which is uh, the single strand of DNA with RAD51 protein coating it. Uh, again, it's going to carry out this reaction to form a Nick circle and, uh, and, a, and a displaced linear strand. But you can see all of those things now, again, separated on a gel. Uh, at the beginning, all of the label is in the linear double-stranded DNA. And then as time uh, passes, what one sees is the appearance of the Nick circle product these joint molecules uh, that actually precede the appearance of the Nick circle product. So over time, um, the Nick circle product is, is building up. And at the same time, as uh, the Nick circle is appearing, one sees the appearance of the single-stranded DNA. And there wasn't any single-stranded DNA at the beginning, but only after the, re the repair reaction is over do we see the appearance of this product. So we know from these experiments biochemically um, that, that the Rec A and Rad51 proteins have this ability to, um, to exchange strands using uh, base pairing as the mechanism to sort of catalyze uh, strand invasion, which is the key step in all of these homologous recombination processes.